watching Chicago's very own WGN Evening News. On Medical Watch, Marijuana in Memory. Dina Baer joins us now with the disturbing results of a new study. Mike and Mark, marijuana alters the memory of teen users long after they stop using the drug. Northwestern Medicine researchers compared the brains of users and non-users. Those who said they smoked pot were young adults who from the age of 16 or 17 used marijuana daily for about three years. On MRI scans, they clearly saw physical differences among the heavy marijuana users two years after they stopped abusing the drug. Inflammation was present in the area of the brain associated with memory. The researchers say the maturing brain of teenagers is impacted long term even by brief marijuana use. So joining me now to discuss these findings more and the implications of teenage drug use is addiction medicine specialist, Dr. Tom Wright from Rosecrans Treatment Center, a child and adolescent psychiatrist. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. So let's talk about this idea of, of heavy use because the heavy use caused a tremendous amount of inflammation, but even smaller use caused some brain changes. Yeah, this study also was sort of a dose dependent study. They looked at changes of people that had milder use use versus more use and they all had changes now it was dose dependent so if you used more the changes were bigger the hippocampus was smaller and it had a different sort of morphology or shape but even if you used a little bit it still made changes too so it's going to affect you no matter what the use is maybe less if it's less using but it's still going to affect it can you discuss the difference between adults who would use perhaps daily and teenagers and why it is such a difference in impact well uh, really in this study uh, sort of supported what a lot of other studies show us is that the developing brain is much more susceptible to sort of changes that can happen if you introduce a substance like marijuana or any drugs to it. So really what we're looking at and what we're worried about with adolescents is all the changes and all the development that's happening. We used to think that a brain was sort of developed by the time you were a child. We know now that it continues to develop in an adolescent up until you're 23, 24 years old. So this is a really sensitive time to introduce other really poisons or other chemicals that might affect it. I think it's so challenging though, as a parent even, to draw a hard line in the sand because you've got states that are legalizing marijuana, you've got medical marijuana, so teenagers saying, look, this is medicine, how can it be bad for me? Yeah, you know, Rosecrans, we really are worried about what we're calling this is the mixed message, you know, with all the legalization, yet there still are tons of studies, including this one, that really support the really harmful effects that marijuana can have on the brain. So we worry about that mixed messages. Even in Colorado, you know, where there's been legalized marijuana, medical marijuana, as well as recreational use, we're starting to see some changes in teenagers' attitudes about it. And we're worried that this is just going to increase the amount of teenagers that are going to be using and all the brain effects that... Um, develop as a result. So what would be your advice to parents out there now who are reading this study and saying, boy, this is very troubling to me. How do you bring up this topic with your children and how do you counter their argument that, hey, it's okay for some? Well, I think there's two things the parent needs to think about. First of all is prevention, you know, and I think the best way to prevent drug use from starting is uh, having a good open uh, uh, conversations with your kids about drugs, about lots of things, and that starts when they're just in grade school. Maybe not about drugs specifically, but making sure you're interested in what they're interested in, having good, good lines of communication. And then it moves into drugs. Don't be afraid to talk about, you know, the risks that may happen in school or the temptations they may have at the dinner table. Have dinner with them frequently. Talk to them about these things. Open lines of communication are the most important thing. But then the second part is if they are using, that's when you have to turn to someone else, you know, for help and look for some help. Because you have seen the truly mm -hmm. devastating effects of this and, that, and how addiction impacts people lives. Yeah, at Rosecrans, we, when they come to Rosecrans, it's after they've had a lot of trouble with the law or physical problems along with it, you know, families falling apart as a result, and that's when we try, we, we, we want to prevent that from happening, but we can help them if they call us and they come, we can help them at that point too. Navigating the teenage years that's is right. not easy. Thank you so much for your advice, doctor. Mark, Micah. Thank you, Dina.